There's a few things I'd like to talk about when it comes to center of gravity and mean aerodynamic chord and the calculations that are used for that. We're in uh, the FAA Weight and Balance Handbook, Chapter 3, pages 8 and 9. There are only a couple of pages here that we need to worry about. In our first picture here, in 3-16, we're looking at here this slice of the wing is the mean aer aerodynamic chord for that. We've got the leading edge uh, mean aerodynamic chord. That's the leading edge and the trailing edge, TMAC. LEMAC and TMAC. Big definitions we need to know. And in this, we have in, in the airplane, uh, let's go down to the next picture here. This picture, 3-17. We've had from the very beginning in, in our weight and balance studies, the datum, which is just the measuring point. That's where the, I call it the end of the tape measure. That's the point that we're going to measure from. On this airplane, the datum is at the nose, and we can see they've drawn in the leading edge of the wing and the trailing edge at the wing at this wing slice, this overhead slice in the wing, where we're going to call it the mean chord or the mean uh, average chord, mean aerodynamic chord. Now, the calculations come into it because a lot of our calculations early on have been where we've used the numbering system of the airplane. Well, now when we go to mean aerodynamic chord, we are going to use the numbering system of the wing. And from the, now you can see they put the station, the numbering system for the airplane at station 144 is where the leading edge is on the mean aerodynamic chord. And at station 206, is where the trailing edge is on the uh, mean air aerodynamic chord line. And you can see that they must have calculated a CG at 161. So that's the numbering line for the airplane. If we want to convert this into a MAC number, MAC is expressed in percent, with the leading edge being 0 and the trailing edge, TMAC, being 100%. That is the the distance of the wing. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at formulas. We start out here with this formula where the mean aerodynamic chord is the TMAC minus LEMAC. And they've done this in inches, right? So this comes from the datum, the numbering line for the airplane. And in this example, they said the mean aerodynamic chord, the TMAC, uh, was at 206 and the leading edge, or LEMAC, was at 144. 206 minus 144 gives us 62 inches. Okay, now the 62 inches is, is how long the cord is at the MAC mean aerodynamic cord line. Next, they tell us, it says right here, in order to find the percent MAC, determine the distance of the CG from the Lee MAC. And we took the CG, which was at station 161, and we subtracted the leading edge meet, uh, MAC which was 144. So 160, uh, 161 minus 144 was 17 inches. Okay, then we use this formula. So CG in percent MAC is the distance aft of the leading edge, or Lee MAC, times 100 divided by the length of the mean aerodynamic chord, which we found out in the earlier calculation was 62. So in this situation, you can see our CG is located, whether you do the math, right? The CG is located at 27.4% MAC, mean aerodynamic chord. What if I know what the percent MAC is? How do I get it back to a station number, the numbering system for the airplane in inches? Okay, so here's that same formula. CG inches from datum, that is the leading edge MAC plus the mean or dynamic chords times the CG percent MAC divided by 100. So if we take 144, that was where the leading edge was. We take 62, that was the length of the mean or dynamic chord. We take 62 times 27.4 divided by 100, we get 160.9 inches um, on the datum. And if we look back at our picture, our CG, they said 161. So they took 160.9, they rounded it. Okay? So that is the way that we get the other direction using these calculations of mean aerodynamic court.